Welcome back. So in the last few lectures, I've introduced the fast Fourier transform, which is a computationally efficient way of taking the Fourier transform of data. And in the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to actually do this in MATLAB and in Python. And for the first example I want to cook up, I'm basically just going to show you how to compute the FFT of a signal that is the sum of two sine waves, so kind of a two-tone signal. We're going to compute its, uh, its Fourier transform using the FFT, and then I'm going to show you how you can use this to denoise your signal. Okay? Good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through this code. Um, this is the MATLAB version. Uh, you can download all of this at databookuw.com. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a signal in time from time 0 to time 1 uh, with a delta t of 0.001. And I'm going to make my clean signal be the sum of two sine waves, sine of 2 pi times 50 times t plus sine of 2 pi times 120 times t. So these are two pure tone sine waves at 50 hertz and at 120 hertz, and I'm adding those up to make my, my clean signal. Then I'm going to add some noise, uh, actually a relatively large amount of noise. So this uh, clean signal is going to have amplitude kind of plus or minus uh, 2. And I'm adding noise, which is um, a little bit bigger than, than the size of the signal. Okay, So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just run this bit here, and you're going to see, uh, kind of I'm going to plot the true signal and the noisy signal. Okay, so here we have... Um, Kind of this is this is time on the x-axis, and then this is the signal, and the white signal is the clean two-tone uh, data. You can tell that this is kind of just two frequencies interacting uh, with each other over time. But red is my noisy data that I've added uh, Gaussian white noise to. Okay, and so we're going to play a game. We're going to pretend that all we got, someone you know, sent us some data. We had uh, collaborators, and they sent us this red data here, and that's all we saw is this red data. Could you tell that underneath all of this noise, there was actually this, uh, this kind of white signal going on? Okay, that's the game we're going to play. Okay, good. So now what we're going to do is in the next section here, we're going to compute the fast Fourier transform. We're going to compute the Fourier transform uh, with the FFT command. And in every language, uh, the FFT is basically a one-liner. So all of the, the guts of the FFT algorithm are built into this one-line command FFT. And so you tell uh, the FFT command what your data is, this, this vector of data F and how long that data is, how many elements in, in, the, in the data vector n, okay? And so in one line, I compute the FFT. This is called my F hat, okay? And now what we're going to do is remember that all of our, um, so we went from F through the FFT to F hat, okay? And this is a vector of Fourier coefficients. Each of these is a complex valued uh, entry. Okay, so each entry of this Fourier transform vector, these are vectors of data, and this is a vector of Fourier coefficients. And each element of this vector of Fourier coefficients is a complex number. It has a magnitude and a phase. Okay, the magnitude tells you how important that frequency is, how, how much of, of that particular frequency, sine and cosine, are in the data. And the phase tells you if it's more cosine or more sine and where in between. Okay, uh, so here the, the power spectral density, the PSD, what I'm doing basically is taking F hat times its uh, complex conjugate divided by N. And what that really means, if I take some complex value lambda times lambda bar, that's another way of just saying what is the kind of magnitude of lambda squared. Okay, you can work this out if, if lambda was a plus i b, then lambda times uh, lambda transpose, lambda transpose, or, or complex conjugate, is a minus i b. If I multiply those, uh, I get a squared plus b squared. My minus i squared becomes a plus. And so lambda lambda transpose is just uh, a way of doing this on my whole vector of data to compute the the norm, the, the magnitude squared of every single one of, one of these entries, 
Okay, and depending on what your input data is, depending on what F is, this might have units of power, and that's why it's called the, the power spectral density. Okay, so you can think about, um, you know, if this is some signal in time, then um, your Fourier transform will be frequencies, uh, which have units of per, per time, and you can work out that this PSD has the right units of, of power. Okay, and so uh, the last thing I have to do is create this frequency vector. So this is just uh, in MATLAB. You have to figure out like each element corresponds to a specific frequency from low frequency to high frequency. And so you have to figure out what your fundamental, your vector of frequencies are um, here. So it's one divided by dt times n uh, times a vector from zero to n. So from lowest frequency zero to highest frequency n, okay? Um, okay, good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot that power spectral density versus those frequencies here. And remember, we're computing this on our noisy data. So let's run that now. Okay, so on the noisy data that someone uh, emailed me, this red data, I compute the power spectral density. So this now has axis of frequency. This is... Um, in units of, of hertz, okay, so 50 hertz, 120 hertz. In fact, you can actually see right here kind of um, the, the 50 hertz spike and the 120 hertz spike in the data. Um, I really should be labeling my axes, so you at home, please label your axes. Uh, and this y-axis here is the power in each of those frequencies in the red data. So this is called the power spectral density plot, and it shows you which frequencies in units of hertz have the most power. And so right off the bat, you can see that when you compute, even though that red signal looked super noisy and messy, when you compute its power spectrum, when you Fourier transform the data and look at the, the power spectrum of, of those Fourier coefficients, you can see quite clearly that there are two very large peaks and then a bunch of noise, kind of a noise floor. And so this gives you some idea of how you might filter your, your data. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just draw a threshold at around 100, and anything that's larger than 100 we're going to keep, and anything that's smaller than 100 we're going to manually zero out. That's going to be our, our noise filter. Okay? Uh, and so that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to use the power spectral density to filter out noise. And again, in MATLAB, this is super simple. What I do is I just take, uh, I find all of the indices of the frequencies where the power is greater than 100. So this is an indices, uh, it's a vector of zeros and ones. It's one every, for every frequency where the power spectrum is bigger than 100, and it's zero if it's less. Then I take my power spectrum and I multiply it by those indices. So anything that was in the noise floor gets multiplied by zero, and only the values that had a power greater than 100 get multiplied by one. So it only keeps those big peaks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot those, and I'm going to inverse Fourier transform and plot the clean filtered signal. So once I have, uh, let's, let's write this out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter um, basically the power of f hat squared less than 100. So anything that has power less than 100, I'm going to kill it. Uh, so then I'm going to have some you know, f hat filt. And then the last step I'm going to do is I'm going to run an inverse fast Fourier transform to get f uh, filtered, to get my original signal but filtered. Okay, so we've computed the FFT. Now what we've done is we have zeroed out all of the entries with small Fourier coefficients, and now I'm going to inverse Fourier transform to get my clean signal in time. And when we do that, this is what we get. Okay, so remember, we drew our line here, and so anything that had value less than 100, we just killed it. And so you can see these kind of light blue uh, filtered spikes here. These are after filtering out the power spectrum. Okay, so I've killed everything smaller. I've zeroed out those coefficients. And then when you inverse Fourier transform this light blue signal, what you recover is a very, very clean version of your noisy, noisy data. So even if someone sent you this red data and didn't tell you that there was this underlying signal, this white signal that was low dimensional and clean, you could Fourier transform your red data you could see that you had two strong peaks, zero out everything small, and then when you inverse Fourier transform, you recover your clean signal.
So this is super, super useful um, for, for cleaning and denoising, for taking data that might be from real experiments, real noisy data, and pulling out the dominant frequency components and cleaning out everything else. Um, and in this example, we kind of just walked through how you compute the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform, uh, how you interpret the power spectrum. So it's literally how much power is in each of these frequencies in hertz. So we had uh, a sign at 50 hertz and 120 hertz, and you see those pop out clear as day. And then you can filter an inverse Fourier transform to get a, a clean signal. Okay, so pretty powerful. Um, this is really kind of just a toy example, but you can see right away that you could probably use this uh, in lots and lots of applications. Okay, thank you.